Hello and welcome back to my little garage. In today's episode we're going to drink some beer. And we're also going to attempt to paint an open face helmet. This is the test subject. It's uh, near enough brand new. It's got a tiny little chip right over here, but we can we can deal with it. Um, what's so special about it? Well, it's just another helmet we're going to paint. However, I am a little bit excited about that project because we're going to use um, well, I'll show you a slightly different technique than I used previously, especially on the last part when it comes to finishing off that helmet. And I've been experimenting with that for the last few days. I've got the results where I want them to be, anyway. So, um, let's get it done. First thing, we need to mask it out. Now, that is sorted. It is a little bit time consuming process, but it's worth taking your time to get it done right. As uh, from now on, I won't be redoing that again. Um, this is gonna stay here until I'm gonna clear coat it. Rightio, with that boring job out of the way, I need to sand it down a little bit, get rid of those um, paint chips over here, get it ready for the primer. I like to use them red scotch pads on the uh, hard to get places, um, around them studs and around the edge as well, when I can't get with my uh, power tools. Um, I also like to use them on slightly um, soft surfaces, some plastics, you know, like plastic bumpers, if you do a little painting on that, anything that is not metal, or if you don't want to go through as well, these are very forgiving. I use the red one, it's my favorite for like, you know, uh, deeper scratches, basically. I use the gray one for the uh, finer effect, but this is just right, because you can't go through, you can't get too much damage to the surface, like with sandpaper you could. So uh, I do like using these guys. Doesn't mean you have to. <laughs> Alrighty, now I've got this bad boy ready to rock and roll. And, well, there's nothing else. Let's give it some primer. Let's do it now. Right, here we are, a um, couple of hours later. I've got the primer ready, it's fully dry. Um, I um, wasn't going for a complete coverage of the primer, as you can see it's not very attractive looking right now, but it doesn't matter because you already had a, a base layer on it, it was factory painted, so priming wasn't necessary. The reason I primed it is A, I use a white primer to give me a clean base to work on, and B, it's always good to um, promote the adhesion of a, of a paint that's coming on top of it. So that was two reasons I've done it this way. I used a water-based primer for this project um, for two reasons really. Um, one, it's um, I'm making sure it's not going to react with uh, the materials that uh, helmet is made of. It's not going to melt it. It's not going to you know no chemical reaction is going to happen over there because it's water-based. And number two, it doesn't stink, <laughs> which is also very helpful. I'm going to focus heavily on the middle section right here and around the edges all day around the helmet as that's where the lighter color is going to be. So um, I'm not going to paint the whole helmet, I'm going to focus on them sections where I want to reverse mask it later on. I'll get it done now. This was how we're looking after the first layer. Well, it's not exactly a full layer because I'm purpose missed that spot over here, as I said. The main part of that color, the lightest color, is going to go right away across and down here. So as you can see, this is exactly what I replicated. Um, it helps in two ways. It kind of nicely blends it in without too much of a paint buildup. And I can reverse mask it and, and apply the other color over here when I need to. Right, I can't do any anything more right now. I need to wait for it to dry. So I'll, guys, I'll catch you uh, tomorrow, which, uh, well, tomorrow in my time, in about five seconds, YouTube time. The first color fully dry and sanded down to my likening. Uh, it's time to mask out the uh, reverse mask, the uh, second color design, which is gonna be around here. That's already done. Ready to apply second coat, and I'm going for like a dirty kind of blue. 
let's get it done. And this is what we get when you mix uh, blue base, about 80% of it, with 20% of candy brown. You get that color of shade of blue, which is more or less what I'm going for. Right, this is pretty much the boring job done. Now we're gonna have some fun with it. Ready? Well, let's do this. Yeah, you guessed it, that's gonna be a BMW helmet. Well, helmet for BMW bike anyway. Um, helmet is not branded by BMW. And a guy who ordered it, his nickname is Big Al, so uh, he asked me to put his name on the back. And I'm very happy to do so. Right, that was kind of a stencil job, a bit of a boring stuff. Now, let's, um, let's put the cherry on top of that cake. Um, something special coming up. Instead of talking about it, I better show you. Let's get it done. Right, I don't know about you guys, but I really like it. I really like that combination of colors, and I really like how it turned out. Um, but we are not done yet, no. Not even close. The fun, in fact, it's about to begin. People often ask um, why you use metal leaf, like copper leaf or gold leaf, um, and not just paint. Well, it's quite simple. You could never get that amount of shine and texture from paint alone. Uh, the way that metal, the real metal that ref reflects the light is just another level. I always like that effect. Combination of paint. Once this is sealed with clear coat it just brings it to another level. It really makes it pop. Alright guys, at this stage I can reveal that this helmet, the order for this helmet is to be aged. Aged helmet, um, Big Al didn't want it brand new. Well, it is brand new, but he didn't want it looking brand spanking new. He wanted me to age it a little bit. And in order to do so, um, I've got a couple of tricks in my sleeve. But first of them uh, is gonna put the outline on the copper leaf uh, with enamel paint. And normally I will mix hardener in enamel paint before clear coat, otherwise, it wrinkles up. But for that very reason, I'm not going to do that and I'm going to show you what happens with enamel paint when you clear coat it, when you don't mix enamel paint with hardener. Uh, for the purpose of this exercise I'm not going to do that because I'm thinking ahead and once we get to that stage I'll show you why I do what I do. and roll. I think it looks better already um, and yet again I did not mix hardener with the enamel paint strapping paint and the very reason I've done that I want it to wrinkle up under clear coat because next stage on this I only clear coat it just to seal what I've done already 
and then we're gonna have some more fun with it but I want to clear it first and I'll show you the effect uh, what's gonna happen with the enamel paint uh, when I hit it with the clear coat yet again no hardener mixed with that enamel paint and I've done it on purpose let's have a look in just two seconds see this this is exactly the reason why you have to mix hardener with your enamel paint, your enamel paint shopping paint, before you want to clear coat it. Otherwise, it will wrinkle up. There's a chemical reaction. Enamel paint doesn't really like clear coat, doesn't like the finish, doesn't clear coat, and generally they just don't mix very well. Obviously, there are ways of dealing with it if you can't put hardener to it for whatever reason. There are ways of doing it, but that's a story for a different episode. Uh, this, however, is the effect I was after, and uh, I'm gonna show you why. As I explained previously, this helmet is gonna be kind of aged design, it's gonna be looking worn, and that wrinkle effect over here um, is gonna help me achieve that. So let's put some paper to it and get ready for stage two. Here we go. This is what we look like approximately about 45 minutes of sanding it down. As you can see, when the paint was wrinkled up, it took the top off and revealed the paint underneath. Uh, went through on purpose on a few places, like here and here on the copper leaf, just to make it look a little bit aged. Um, even so, I'm kind of liking where we're standing at with this. This is more or less what I'm going for. But as you guess, there will be a little bit more to come, so watch this space. And there we have it guys, this is ready product, ready, clear coated, I use matte clear coat, um, I use few layers of that matte clear coat just to get it nice and smooth, because the problem with matte finish, you can't polish out any imperfections, but I think I'm very happy with it now. Behind the scenes I've added a an enamel paint black paint stripe around the edge just to tie it all in. And I've done some other things as well, which I didn't film on the camera. As you can see, it's a different shade in here than above this crack over here. So what I've done, I've masked it all off um, around this edge. And I spray, spray slightly um, gray textured um, on this side. So it actually looks a different shade. It actually looks like that crack over here exists and, and the clear coat kind of cracked off over the years. And all those other imperfections here, other by hand as well. Um, I gave it a little bit of a scuffing to the rubber edge because it was completely shiny and uh, it just didn't go together with, uh, with that finish. Um, overall, I think, in my humble opinion, I think that helmet actually looks like it's been on the road for, uh, for years, like from the 1960s at least, I hope. Um, it doesn't look too fake, as in brand new helmets, sprayed that way. I think it actually made a pretty good job over here too. Uh, to make it look like it's been worn over and over again. 
I've even sanded off um, these chrome buttons. I used uh, uh, 600 grit sandpaper on it just to remove the, the chrome and, and, and the nickel plating. So it kind of looks a bit more brassy and, uh, and same over here. I went through uh, that chrome plating um, just to give it a bit more of a vintage look. And I think overall, I'm, I'm very happy with the outcome. What do you think? And that is it guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Hope you learned something new. If you didn't, well, maybe I can learn something from you. Just let me know in the comments below. And until then guys, as always, thank you very much for watching. Rock hard. Have a beer. And I'll see you real soon. <laughs>